viele Stile, er hat Opa, Operetta, Lieder, alles gesungen und äh, ich glaube, ein napolitanischer Lieder passt auch gut. I hope you like it. It's also a napolitanische Napolitan, uh, song that Mr. Janke, Janke Pura hat. A lot, a lot of music gesungen. We hope you like it. Yeah. <laughs> 
divino cammino e non so già a dovato e sto sempre ubriaco e non bevo mai vino ho già vado After this very emotional introduction, I would kindly ask uh, Rector Ulrike Zürich from the Music University here uh, to make a, a, a statement on her own. Please come to the podium. I would like to express my thank you to Ramon Vargas and Ishvan Bonyadi, our dear colleagues and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the MDV University of Music and Performing Arts Vienna, I welcome you all from Vienna, from New York, and all over the world. A special welcome to the president of the Austrian National Council, Wolfgang Sobotka and our alumni. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I welcome our honored guests in New York, Marian Kibura, son of Martha Eckert and Jan Kibura, and his wife, Jane Knox Kibura. I welcome the director of the Austrian Cultural Forum, New York, Michael Haider, and the opera expert, Ken Benson. Thank you so much for joining us. I welcome Her Excellency, Teresa Ingen, and Mr. Winkler. Thank you so much for being here. My warmest welcome and thanks go to Gerald Gruber, the director of the Exil Arti Center, and his team, Ulrike Anton, Nobuko Nakamura and Katharina Reichel. The curator Susanne Korbel, 
who, despite all the unfortunate circumstances, set up this exhibition about Marta Eckert and Jan Kibura, and who managed to connect Vienna and New York for today's opening. And I would like to express my thanks to the architect Cecho Sternek, who created the exhibition design. The exhibition, Mein Lied für Dich, Mein Song for You, Mata Eckert and Jan Kibura, Between Two Worlds, presents the life and artistic work of an opera's dream couple and its contemporaries. We are very proud that Exil Arte Center has received the estate of these two extraordinary artists and is now able to work on it scientifically as well as artistically. In 1938, Marta Eckert and Jan Kibura were forced by the Nazi regime to leave Vienna, the city where they got famous and where they met and fell in love. In American exile, they continued their careers and won new generations of viewers for opera and operetta. At the same time, their artistic legacy remained alive in the memories of millions of people all over Europe. The exhibition at MTV's Exil Artist Center now presents a collection of posters, videos, documents, and souvenirs of the two opera stars. It also features the stories of around 100 friends and colleagues of the couple, including Billy Wilder, Fritz Grünbaum, Erich Wolfgang Korngold, and Lotte Lehmann. After years of commitment and efforts of Gerald Gruber and his team, the Exil Artist Center is part of the MDV since 2016. With annual exhibitions, concerts, and, live and lively research activities, the research center is dedicated to the reception, preservation, and presentation of Austrian composers, performers, musical academics, and thinkers who were expelled, persecuted, and murdered during the Nazi regime, and whose works were condemned as degenerate. Within four years, Exil Arte has already acquired about 16 estates, which are explored and analyzed by international scientists, as well as by PhD students of the MDV. The center's busy activities include regular publications, currently the work on comprehensive projects about the composer Erich Wolfgang Korngold, as well as own course on European music and consequences of national socialism, which is offered uh, every semester to our students. I would like to take this opportunity to thank also our colleague Michael Haas, who, like Gerald Gruber, has made this his personal mission and lifelong work. With the Exil Artist Center, the MTV makes an active contribution to working through the immense destroying of artists and their careers during the Nazi regime. Our aim is to rediscover compositions that could not achieve the status they deserve because of the persecution of their authors and to ensure, uh, to ensure that they are included in the repertoires of the international cultural institution. In this context, I would like to mention the important uh, cooperation, uh, cooperation between MTV and the Austrian Parliament. And I want to say thank you to Wolfgang Sopota that we could do this great uh, cooperation. Our students support the parliament at events with musical contributions written by these persecuted uh, composers. And thus we have succeeded in giving back the victims of national socialism their voice through their musical language in front of the parliament. Austrian culture has suffered a tremendous devastation under national socialism. We consider it our social responsibility to point this out and not to tolerate the far-reaching consequences 
of Nazi dictatorship are ever forgotten. Let us all help to keep alive the memory of the victims of the crimes of the Nationalsozialism and never forget what was done to them so that the memory can be passed on the future generations. It is in our common responsibility that all next generations develop a sensitivity for populist movements and find the courage to stand up against injustice and disregard to humanity and mankind. In view of the worldwide political developments of these days, this attitude is more important than ever and a commitment like that of the Exil Artist Center is of highest importance. Now I would like to hand over the floor to Wolfgang Sobotka, to the President of the Austrian National Council. Thank you for your attention. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here and to hear the extraordinary performance at the beginning of this event uh, from Ramon Vargas. It was really a present for us, and I think you gave us an impression about the voice of Yan Kippur. And the second, uh, <laughs> what I would mention is, it's uh, about 42 years when I was there by my final examination here in this uh, called high school in this, in this time to play with the piano, uh, the Brahms concert, uh, Brahms Sonata in E moi, E minor. <laughs> it's a long time. Distinguished guests, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen here in Vienna. And a warm welcome, especially to those following this exhibition opening only in New York. It is a great pleasure to share this event with all of you. And I would like to start by wishing you and your families my personal best for your health and safety in these difficult times. And you wear the mask, and I think it's very correct in this way. As we all know, today's exhibition recalls the musical heritage of the Hungarian-born soprano Marta Eggert and the Polish tenor Jan Kipura. As the online advertisements and posters for this exhibition already mentioned it perfectly. Who doesn't know them? Martha Eggert and Jan Kippur, the dream couple in the film, opera, operetta, the superstars of the mid of the 20th century. The eventful life was not only characterized by successes and joyful moments, the biography, and you mentioned it, also reminds us of the darkest chapter in Austrian history. After the so-called Anschluss to National Socialist German, Germany in 1938, Mata Eckert and Jan Kibura, who both have Jewish heritage, were forced to leave Vienna, the city where they met and fell in love, and where they had become, become famous. Their fate, was shared by countless artists, composers, and musicians. Many followed them into exile, but many were also arrested, imprisoned, and murdered. Ladies and gentlemen, this exhibition reminds us not only of two extraordinary artists, it also reminds us to counter anti-democratic tendencies with a clear stance where, whenever and wherever they occur. Remembering is a permanent task. It must lead to appropriate action by all of us in everyday life. In this sense, this exhibition is also a valuable contribution to an appropriate culture of our remembrance. In realizing this important exhibition, many people played an important role. I would like to say a special thank you, namely to Ulrike Such, Rector of the University of Music and Performing Arts in Vienna, to Dr. Susanne Kober, uh, the curator of this exhibition, and to Professor Gerald 
Gerald Gruber, the founder of Exil Arte and head of the Exil Arte Center of their engagement. In the last four years, the Exil Arte Center has already succeeded in bringing back to Vienna over, and it's also mentioned, 16 estates of displaced persons. This legacy is of great value, not only for the appropriate examination of the history, but also for the future of democracy and the rule of law in general. Now I look forward to the next speakers who will tell us more about the remarkable lives of Mother Eggert and Jan Kipura. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Rector of the University of Music and Performing Arts, Vienna. It's a pleasure uh, to be here and to be the head of this uh, institution. Um, as we are now switching to New York, uh, we will see a short clip uh, from the film uh, Vals Brillante uh, from the year 1949. It's a very, very funny scene. Both uh, Jan Kieper and Marta Eggert had, have made many funny scenes, but I think that's one of the best of uh, them. He is playing a bodyguard of a singer, Marta Eggert, uh, she is a famous uh, singer, and uh, they get involved emotional. And uh, in this scene, they are not seeing each other, but uh, the kind of uh, um, behaving is so wonderful and so, I would say, cute uh, between these two uh, people, uh, which are, of, of course, as you, uh, as you know, uh, uh, a couple, a real couple, and uh, the music which is uh, used is, you won't think of that, Mozart's Rondo alla Turca. So <laughs> let's hear this wonderful piece now, clip from Vals Briand. Et maintenant, veuillez écouter la marche turque de Mozart. <laughs>
A warm welcome from New York City uh, on behalf of the Austrian Cultural Forum New York and as co-host of our transatlantic, uh, transatlantic opening ceremony, I'm very pleased to join this special event today. I'm honored to present my greetings to the president of the Austrian National Council, Wolfgang Sobotka, and to the president of, of the University of Music and Performing Arts Vienna, Ulrike Stüch, as well as to Professor Gerold Gruber and curator Dr. Susanne Corbell. Welcome all the guests, both at the Franz Liszt Concert Hall in Vienna, and all those who are joining us via YouTube around the world. And I would like to thank Ramon Vargas for setting the stage with this wonderful performance at the beginning. The New York part of this ceremony is intended to bring Mata Eggert and Jan Kippura closer to you. Connecting continents and worlds, just as the title of this exhibition suggests, can be achieved not only through Mata Eggert and Jan Kippura's musical legacy, but through those individuals who knew them best. It is therefore a great honor and pleasure to welcome and introduce the couple's son, Marian Kippura, a highly respected New York City-based pianist and musician, along with his wife, Jane Knox Kipura, acclaimed writer and researcher about Martha and Jan. And last but not least, we are delighted to welcome the New York City-based opera expert, Ken Benson. Mr. President, Professor Sich, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to hand over to our guest speakers, who shared with us insights on Martha Eggert and Jan Kipura, the lives they have touched in their remarkable careers, the many identities and attributes that can be associated with them as artists, revolutionaries in opera and film, refugees, immigrants, cultural manager. Martha presided over the Austrian Forum, which is sort of a predecessor, uh, predecessor's organization of the Austrian Cultural Forum today, and as bridge builders and superstars who inspired and entertained millions of fans from Alaska to Madagascar, as late Marcel Pravi put it. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you and hello. It's wonderful to be with you all today. As a very young opera lover growing up in New York City, I always knew the names of Jan Kipura and Marta Eggert. I had heard about the great tenor from the older opera fans who had actually heard him live at the Metropolitan Opera. And of course, soon I got to know him through his incredible recordings. I never heard or met him in person, but at that time I could never have imagined that I would actually hear and get to know Marta many years later. Jan Kippur was born in Poland in 1902. His mother was a former singer and his father a baker and grocery owner. In 1920, he went to Warsaw to study law at the university, but he always studied singing and sang in choruses. In 1924, he sang a smaller role in the opera, which is considered the Polish national opera. A year later, he was singing his first leading part, the title role of Faust. Very soon, he was singing in France, Germany, England, and Hungary. He made his debut in Wien at the Staatsoper in Tosca. So Ramon Vargas' tribute was very appropriate today. He sang with the great prima donna of the Staatsoper, Maria Yeritsa. He had a sensational success and became known as the king of tenors. His son, Marion, will soon tell you more about his father's great career. I know Jan Kapura's voice, of course, only from recordings. His sound was both warm and brilliant, with a great technique and a dynamic range from ringing forte to a delicate, exquisite pianissimo. He was a very, very generous singer. He was always ready to sing, not only on stage, but also from the balcony of his, of his hotel after a performance or standing on the roof of his limousine at the stage door. Jan Kapoor died of a heart attack in 1966. 
Marta was 10 years younger, born in 1912 in Budapest. Her mother, like Kipura's mother, was also a singer. Her father was a banker. She and Kipura were both Wunderkinder. Marta made her theatrical debut at the age of 11. In her teenage years, she sang on tours of Denmark, Holland, and Sweden. And she was already singing a demanding repertoire of Rossini, Meyerbeer, and uh, Offenbach. She arrived in Wien at the invitation of the composer, Emmerich Kalman. He invited her to understudy the star, Adele Kern, in his operetta, Das Fashion von Montmartre. She eventually took over the leading role and had a great success. She followed this by singing the role of Adele in Max Reinhardt's famous 1929 Hamburg production of Die Fledermaus at the age of 17. And when I interviewed her 80 years later, she showed me the actual review from that performance. During the early 1930s, Marta was discovered by the film industry and her career really took off, leading to international fame. She made more than 40 films in five languages. Her daughter-in-law and archivist, Jane Knox Kipura, will soon talk about these. On the set of a 1934 film, she met and fell in love with Jan Kipura. They were married in 1936 and together became known as Europe's Liebespaar, causing a sensation wherever they appeared. Eggert appeared on Broadway and had a contract with MGM in Hollywood. Marta and Young sang La Boheme together in Chicago with great success. And in 1943, they starred together on Broadway in a production of Leha's Die Lustige Witwe, conducted by Robert Stoltz with choreography by George Balanchine. They would eventually perform Lustige Witwe more than 2000 times in five languages throughout Europe and America. During her career, Eggert maintained active recital tours in Europe, Canada, and the United States, singing a wide range of extensive repertoire of lieder, opera, film songs, and especially Viennese operetta. After Kippur died, Marta stopped singing for several years, but eventually her mother persuaded her to return to singing, and she had quite an extraordinary late career into her 80s and even 90s. She created an entire new generation of fans. This is the period when I had the great personal pleasure of hearing and meeting Marta. Each year, she was a highlight at Lincoln Center's gala for the Licia Albanese Puccini Foundation. The first time I heard her sing, she sang Wien du Stadt meine Träume. The atmosphere she created in the hall was pure magic. She took us all back to an older, more beautiful time. This period also included regular concerts in London and in 1999, at the age of 87, she sang on the stage of the Wiener Staatsoper, celebrating the first production of the Lustige Witwe at that theater. She sang a medley from Leha's operetta in four languages and received a standing ovation. Even at that age, her voice was pure and steady with perfect intonation and long breath. Her understanding and use of rubato was of the kind we no longer hear. In her cabaret shows at the Cafe Zabarski at the Neue Galerie in New York, she was the perfect hostess in this intimate setting, singing songs and telling stories from her long career. Another wonderful trip back in time. I remember her master classes in New York at the Manhattan School of Music, including one where the students all sang songs from Viennese operettas. Watch what precious information she gave these young singers. I also had the privilege of doing a long interview with Marta at her beautiful home in New York City. We spent hours together and it passed like only a few minutes. Two words that everyone used when speaking about Marta were magic and charm, two qualities that have not survived very well into our 21st century. She carried this magical atmosphere with her always, on stage and off. I'd like to leave you with one little story that Marta told me in our interview. She and Jan were backstage before a performance. Jan was 10 years older and more experienced. He said, Marta, always remember, some of these people in the audience have had a bad day. They may have had a problem at their job or troubles at home. Choose one phrase or moment and sing in a special way tonight just for them. Give them one magical moment. I think we can agree that Jan Kipura and Marta Eggett gave their audiences many magical moments in their long careers. And they still give a, are giving them us, to us today through their recordings films, and the wonderful exhibit that's opening now. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Marta and Jan's son, 
Marian Kipura. Hello. Grüß Gott. Very happy to be with you. Thank you, Ken, Mr. President, Professor Sich. It would be no surprise for me to say that Jan Kippur was my favorite tenor. Uh, sure, I'm his son, so that, that's, that's fairly <laughs> to be expected. Many would share that opinion. I could say, well, look how he turns this phrase and look at this decrescendo and look at these high notes and all these things. Others would have their favorites, fair enough. By the way, Ramos, bravo. Uh, Ramon, fantastic, well done. Uh, I always think of the words of Professor Marcel Pravi, the director, former director, one of the directors of Vienna, Film, uh, Vienna Staatsoper, excuse me, and uh, TV personality, a very famous opera expert. He always used to say that uh, Jan Kipura, his career was unique. He was the total package. He would draw a picture like this, a total package. First, he sang in all major opera houses in the world, leading tenor roles. Rigoletto, Tosca, Aida, Carmen, Trovatore, Faust, Bohème. He also championed contemporary uh, works. Uh, for example, he created the tenor role in Erich Wolfgang Kongo's Das Wunder der Heliane, right? Also the comic opera La Preziosa Ridicole by Felice Latuada at La Scala. And a role that was still new at the time called Kalaf. He helped create at the Staatsoper in Vienna which launched his international career in 1926. Remember, Puccini died only two years earlier in 1924. It was only having established his credentials as a major international opera singer that he was then recruited, snapped up, if you will, by European film moguls in the 1930s. Now, we need to keep in mind that the uh, Film industry in the 1930s was still an evolving medium, yes? And a secret, uh, dear friends, that I want to share with you that I think is important to know, all opera singers in the 1930s wanted to make movies, and many of them did. Uh, now, Jan Kippura's transition was particularly successful, uh, and it made him a household name across several continents. Others were successful as well. My father was used to tell me that the same two or 3,000 people go into the opera house, but millions go to the movies. Uh, not all people were inclined to go to the opera. Not all people could afford to go to the opera, yes? So what my father did, my parents actually together, they brought great music to people who wanted to hear it in operatic themes, yes? And at the same time, there were great composers uh, in, uh, in Europe and in Vienna who composed songs, popular songs for them. These were called Schlager, yes? Uh, composers like Robert Stolz, Misha Spoliansky, uh, uh, Bronislav Kaper, Walter Jurman. These people uh, composed songs, especially for Jan's voice. A friend of mine uh, told me once, an immigrant many, many years ago, he said, you couldn't walk down the Kentnerstrasse 20 meters. You would hear from this uh, Schallplatten, from this uh, record store, Keine uh, Schlafen, es und Dorma, from another one, one of his other film hits, and so on and so forth. So, and this created a situation, as Pravi would say, that uh, it was a parallel career, an operatic stage career and a movie career at the same time. This was remarkable about this, about this career. For example, people would gather around outside the Vienna State Opera from the stage door. Uh, my father would come out, uh, and jump on top of a taxi, and sing to his adoring friends. Today, 
they call this, of course, crossover. They didn't have a name for it then. Uh, as uh, uh, Michael Haida said before, they excelled in opera, film, and operetta. So this was clearly a crossover situation. Then when my parents emigrated to the United States in 1938, their careers continued here. My father sang leading tenor roles at the uh, Metropolitan Opera, and uh, then uh, they started a run of uh, Lehar's The Merry Widow at the Majestic Theater in 1943, which resulted in some 2,000 performances in five languages. In Chicago, they sang it in Polish for the large Polish population there. So uh, I'm very grateful, uh, dear friends, for the Exil Arte and all the important things we have heard about Exil Arte. And I want to thank uh, Professor Gerald Gruber, Dr. Susanna Corbell, and the Vienna team. I also want to thank very much uh, the Austrian Cultural Forum here in New York. Michael Haida, thank you very much. We work very closely with Christian Ebner and uh, uh, Mary Katharina Hösa, who helped put all this together and, and make all of this possible. You know, alone the profound historic context of Exil Arte, what Exil Arte actually means, yes? This is uh, something that must be uh, in our minds from an artistic standpoint of artists remembering persons like my parents and others who deserve to be remembered, who deserve to be heard. They made a difference then, and they make a difference now through Exil Arte. Thank you. Now I have the pleasure of introducing my wonderful wife, Jane Knox Kipora. Great to be with you today. Thanks to everyone at Exil Arte, the spotlight is now shining on Martha Eggett and Jan Kipura. YouTube and social media have clearly changed the world. Today, we can once again watch old films from the late 20s or 30s, but almost a hundred years ago, major European cities, particularly Vienna and Berlin, played a major role in the cutting edge technology of film and particularly sound technology. It was a unique era of talent, genius and creativity, allowing for sight and sound to be, showed, to be shared with the world that can still be seen today. This should be celebrated. Sadly, by 1838, so much was gone. Much of the talent fled to Hollywood if they could. 1938. Many household names and other talented artists went to France, Spain, Portugal, England, South America, Shanghai, and so many other places around the world. But yet, so, and so many were killed. Marta and Jan knew and worked with many of these very talented individuals in fact, hundreds of them. And now they will be allowed to be remembered at Exilate. It was 1930, 90 years ago, when both Marta and Jan would make their first sound movies that made them international superstars on five continents. The film industry worked closely with the recording industry. And no sooner did the fans leave the cinema, but would then rush to buy these, those amazing 78s of the hit songs that they had just heard sung on the screen. No wonder every composer and singer wanted to be part of this new medium. It was huge. And this is how Martha and Jan, with their incredible good looks and beautiful voices, would become amongst the most beloved singers of stage and screen. But now let's go back to Marta's story and ask the question, how did the young Hungarian become such a major international movie star known all over the world before her 20th birthday? Marta's meteoric rise to fame started as a young girl in Budapest, as we have heard. But it was later in her teens when 
the great Hungarian composer, Paul Abraham, would write, start to write coloratura parts for her phenomenal range. And one of these was 1928 in the lead role, The Last Verbelli Girl. A film followed, Chakesh Kishlein van Avilagon, translated, There is only one girl in the world. This was a silent movie directed by the famous Bella Gal. But international stardom came in 1829. 1929, I've got a century out, sorry. But international stardom came in 1929 when she sang the title role in a revival of Bela Zekovic's operetta, The Golden Bird, which opened at the Royal Orpheum of of in Budapest in August of that year. Critics in the newspaper, the Magia Hilla, were ecstatic about her performance. After the show, a lady came up to Martha, who simply introduced herself as Ilonka Abelsberg, but she just happened to be Emrich Kalman's sister. It did not take long before introductions were made and Vienna to follow. Martha often retold the story about this lady who wanted to introduce her to her brother. And so it was. Marta and her mother would leave Hungary for Vienna in early 1930, aged 17 years old. And Marta was auditioned and had for the understudy role in Valkyrie von Momatra, for the Violet of Momatra. And after that, the sensational reviews acclaimed her as officially the newest and latest star. But the big screen beckoned and the giants of the German Austrian film industry were anxious to sign up Martha as their new star. She was perfect. She could sing, she could dance, she could act. And she had all the natural beauty and stage ability that adapted perfectly for their needs on the big screen. She was given the lead role in the sound movie, Die Brautikams Witwe, The Bridegroom's Widow. The music was by Hans May. The film in German was to be shot at Elstree Studios in London. And that was just the start of so many films. Excitement over Marta's beautiful voice and natural tra talent traveled fast, thanks to sophisticated distribution networks across the world. Subtitles were made in a dozen languages at least. Marta had become a superstar and famous composers like Franz Leha were among many who seized the opportunity to write music for Marta's incredible coloratura voice. His first film was an enormous hit. There were glowing reviews in 1933 of Marta's first Leha film, in fact, in English, Where Is This Lady, as far away as Australia. The German title was Es war einmal an Walzer. And thanks to YouTube, this film can be watched with the Argentine title, Café Viennes. 90 years later. It was on March 17th movie in Vienna, 1934, appropriately called Mein Herz Ruf nach dir, that she met and fell in love with her husband, Jan Kipora, the love couple that became so incredibly famous together as well in the movies. In all, Martha would make 32 movies before their immigration to the United States in 1938. And, uh, um, Marta then, of course, made two Hollywood movies in, in, with Judy Garland in 1942 and 1943. And as Ken said, mentioned earlier, the rest was history in her life in America. I have been very privileged to be the daughter-in-law of two such great artists. And on a personal note, can assure you that Marta was the absolutely greatest mother-in-law anyone could hope for. Anyone who witnessed her talent will assure you that while she never stopped being a great singer and actress, she could not hide her heart of gold. And I know the same is said of Jan Kipora. Thank you, Marta and Jan, for so much that you have given us. We'll now pass you back to Michael Haider, who I would also like to thank along with the New York and Vienna team.
Thank you so much, Jane Knox Kipura, Marian Kipura, and Ken Benson for these insights into the exciting and inspiring lives of Martha Eggert and Jan Kipura. Thank you so much for doing this project and uh, for being with us. Uh, thank you for your friendship. Uh, in concluding this New York City part of uh, our ceremony, uh, I would like to briefly add uh, that the Austrian Cultural Forum uh, New York has supported the newly edited and subtitled version of the signature film Zauber the Bohème, Charm of the Bohème, featuring both Martha and Jan, and which in our initial pre-pandemic plans were actually going to screen here at the Austrian Cultural Forum tonight. Uh, but I'm confident that we will be able to do this at some point next year. Zauber the Bohème received starred reviews, including the New York Times, after its release in New York City cinemas in March 1938. Uh, in a sadly ironic way, also a tragic key date in Austrian history, uh, as a tender, sorrowful, musically enchanting film and wrote one of the most impressive of our cinema operas. What strikes me as a historian in this 1938 review about the film and its protagonists is also its final sentence, which states that, quote, Vienna has enough grief as it is without manufacturing it in its film studios. So this, is all, this also captures not only the zeitgeist of the film, but it contextualizes the entire oeuvre of Martha Eggert and Jan Kipura, and of course also the work of Exil Arte at the University of, Vienna, uh, University of Music and Performing Arts, Vienna. With that in mind, uh, I would like to return our ceremony back to Vienna and hand it back to our colleagues in Vienna. If there are any questions from the general audience on YouTube for Jane and Marian Kipura or for Ken Benson, Please do not hesitate and send them by leaving a comment on our YouTube, uh, on the YouTube channel, or you may also send us just an email and we will pass your questions on. And we will have a separate online press event for media representatives right after this opening at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So please stay tuned. And now back to Gerald Gruber in Vienna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael Haider, and thanks, of course, uh, to Marian uh, and uh, Jane. They are re really wonderful people. Thanks also to Christian Ebner and Mary Kat Höser, who helped uh, us at the at Austrian Cultural Forum. Before I uh, kindly ask Susanne Korbel to make a short summary of uh, the uh, of the exhibit, I would like to show you a short clip, a short film, three minutes of our exhibition and how it develops in the last weeks. Thank you to uh, Ceko uh, Sternek, uh, our architect, for this wonderful exhibition. It's really great. Thank you. And now, three minutes of the exhibit. <laughs> So 
Director Sich, dear President Sobotka, um, dear Dr. Haider, and dear Marian and Jane Kipura Knox, dear distinguished guests. This exhibition, which you can see downstairs on the first floor, or the others who are joining us from all over the world, have seen in the short video clip now, has emerged over the last three years. It was back then in New York in autumn. 2017, when um, Gerald Gruber introduced me to Marian Kipura and Jane Knox. And we sat down at their apartment, and I first encountered these wonderful materials that witnessed the lives of, Jane, um, of Jan Kipura and Martha Eckert. These materials are unique. Um, they portray their lives, they portray their profoundly original work in opera, operetta, schlager, film, and many other genres in between. But what is more, these materials portray also their faith and the darkest side of the history of the 20th century. And they represent all the networks of people they work together with. And therefore, I was so honored to be allowed to even touch these materials and to work to to work with them. And I think these are exhibits every um, exhibition visitor could wish for. The main idea of the exhibition was not only to display um, the careers of this dream couple in opera and film, but also to show their connectedness and interrelatedness with more than 150 colleagues who ended up either as refugees or being persecuted or murdered because of, their, uh, because of the National Socialist regime. So the aim of the exhibition is to bring these two sides together and to give you the chance to encounter these materials that portray their lives, all their lives, um, in the rooms of the MDV Vienna. Yet, the development of the exhibition was not mine alone, of course. I would like to thank um, the curatorial assistant Nobuko Nakarama, Professor Gerold Gruber, Ulrike Andon, Katharina Reichel, and the whole team of the MDW for the support, for their inspiration, and also for the encouragement they, um, they brought to me. Without Cecho Sternikis, unbelievable genius talent, all our ideas wouldn't have seen the light of the day. Thank you also, Checo. And I would also like to thank every visitor and every 
every person who is now watching um, our event, because I think this is the most important part of all this. It needs people that hear and listen to the music. It's need, it needs people that come to the exhibitions and become interested in the lives of the people who were persecuted, who had to flee Austria, Nazi Germany, and who were probably, or who maybe did not have the great um, careers Mother Eckert and Jan Kippur had, and who fell into a billion. So thank you for being here and for listening to us. And I hope you enjoy the exhibition downstairs. Thank you very much, uh, Susanne Corbel, and I also want to thank uh, multiple other people who had helped us. Of course, also this uh, wonderful filmmaker, Anthony Jacobs, who, who made this film just in three days. Uh, so it's really remarkable that he did that so fast. And I want, of course, to thank uh, all the sponsors, the National Fund, the Zukunft Fund. We have also private sponsors to help us. Uh, we have also the, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who, uh, uh, who helped us to get the, uh, the estates uh, to, uh, to Vienna. Thanks to Kunstrand, thanks to, thanks to art handling. So there are so, so many people, and I hope I haven't forgotten any. They were also named uh, before in the speech of uh, uh, Susanne. I'm very grateful that uh, we had, uh, we have, uh, we have the opportunity to come together in New York with Marianne and Jane and go uh, to, through all these materials and documents, and it was really a great time. Thank you very much. And uh, now you here in Vienna have the opportunity to go down into the exhibition. And uh, as I mentioned before, please use the QR co codes for the music, and uh, Susanne and I will stay here uh, to have a discussion with uh, uh, New York and, and people who have uh, uh, questions to us. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks to New York. It was a pleasure for us to be together.